there are many types of incorrect invasions in Go. And in this bonus lesson, I want to talk about a particular kind. Let me describe the situation here. Let's say you, you're playing the game and you've completed the territories, the walls are very strong, and at the very end of the game, just before you pass, your opponent suddenly plays inside your territory. Like seriously, what? That's so unfair. You rush to attack the invader and then it just lives and you lose the game. If this is a story of one of your games, then this lesson is for you. You see, when the walls of your territory become stronger and stronger throughout the whole game, and then at some point they become strong enough that the moyo turns into territory and any invasion becomes impossible. If your opponent invades, however, at this point all the regular game principles and game logic just don't apply to the situation anymore. We need a new set of principles. We need some new techniques. Let me quickly demonstrate what I'm talking about with this simple star point example. We always think of a sun sun invasion in the star point as the harbor of peace and safety. But not in this case. Black has this wall which turns this piece of land into Black's territory. So let's say white still invades here, which is too late. If black plays as usual, we're going to get this sort of result. Black will hane, this, black will extend, white extends, and the white group is suddenly alive here. It looks normal? It does, but without the outside wall. With the wall, however, we can afford to be a lot more aggressive than usual. So when white invades, we block, white extends, and now normally we don't play on the second line, but when it's your territory, playing on the second line will hit the base out of the white stones. So playing here is a very good technique. White is going to get out of the corner, and normally we would be really unhappy about this, but not in this case, because we have the wall. So if we just extend, white has nowhere to go. White only has one eye in the corner. White can get it like this, but there's not going to be a second eye. And if white can get a second eye here, there's no way for white to get it next to the wall. So black can just extend, and this is only one eye, and white can never make another one. If white tries to hunt it, that's okay. We block, and if white connects, we're not afraid of any cuts here. Because all the letters work for black. Black can simply push inside. Again, only one eye in the corner for white. If white cuts, just extend. And by the way, extension is another very strong tool here. In a normal game, a hane is usually stronger. But when you're trying to kill, you play on the second line, you extend everything not to create any more weaknesses, and there's no life in here. But this corner in itself is quite small. Let's try a more challenging example. This is a game between two Russian masters, Ilya Shikshin as black and Vyacheslav Kaimen as white. This game is known as one of the shortest games in tournament history that made it to counting. Only 92 moves here. But we're going to take a look at this game after it was finished. Here it is. So let's say that right before ending the game, black says that, hey, this area is huge. Why not try to live there inside? and plays something like this. And even with such a gigantic area, it's important not to panic. You have to remind yourself that this wall is very strong, and all of this is actually white's territory. And if you're white here, you should really tell yourself that the only place where this stone is going is right here in the lid. Now suppose white attacks from one side, and black jumps in the other direction, and this is our two space extension. Normally we'd say that if you make one of these, well, you're safe. Your group is going to be alive, but not in this case. Remember, there's too much strength outside, so all of the regular rules are going to be bent and warped here. White can just play something as simple as this, and if black responds, this, black responds, and maybe something from, from the top, and this space is only enough for making one eye, but not two. And here, it's going to be impossible to make the second eye. So black is going to die. If this feels a little too simple, you can also try to hit black from underneath, playing something like this. And if black blocks, we just uh, play something like this, then connect, 
And once again, black has no base here. Black will be forced to run to the wall, and of course making two eyes here is going to be very difficult. Oh, when I say difficult, I really mean impossible. Yes, black can Atari. And uh, make a good shape like this. But next we just have to ask ourselves, where is the next move for black that would make black a better eye shape? And try to hit those points first. For example, playing here seems like a very good shape for black. So, white can play here instead. Or maybe, considering that there's a way to make this eye false, white can attach directly. And even if black now plays a Hane, we just extend, remember? And this is a false eye. Black is going to try to make a better shape again. We can just poke at this shape, playing here, or playing here. There's no eye at the bottom, no eye here, no eye here. Maybe black can manage to make one eye somewhere in the center, but definitely not two. But remember, we don't even have to allow a two-space extension. So when black invades here, we can play on the second line right away to hit the base from underneath of the black stones. Just playing something like this is going to work. And if black blocks here, we can just approach. And these two stones have no eye shape. Just anything that black is going to try here, just extend. Here, just extend. So once again, we play on the second line to hit the base. Whenever our opponent tries to attach to anything, for example, playing something like this to try to make it more confusing, just extend, don't honey. Simply extend to keep yourself strong. And just when your opponent is about to create some eye shape, just poke at all the weaknesses, all the shape points, and remove the eyes. All of this eye poking and base hitting sounds absolutely brutal, but this is how we have to play if we don't want to let our opponent live inside our territory. And then again, remember that this was a really challenging example. This area is enormous, but let's take a look at another example, this time from one of our subscribers' games, and let's try to apply the same principles there. This is a six stone handicap game of one of our subscribers from Poland, Richard. He's playing white here against his son, Ruscio. And would you believe me if I told you that at this point, when the territories are complete and the game is pretty much even, white managed to invade here. Well, not living there completely, but let me show you what happened. And black captures the large white group next. But this is not a success for black, because black lost part of this territory here, and white managed to capture these two stones, in Sente. Now let's try to find an easier way to handle this invasion for black, now that we know some principles. In some double-digit Q players games, you would often see an invasion somewhere very late in the game, and then after an invasion, somebody would start attaching to that stone, and then trying some crazy cross cuts like this. And before you know it, white captures some stones and white is alive there. We are not going to be like that. Uh-uh. Remember, just hit the base and then extend. So when white invades here, find the side which seems to have more weaknesses and start attacking from there. Well, in this case, both sides seem fairly strong, but we could say that maybe this side has some more weaknesses, like this one, and there's a cut here. So we attack from the weaker side. Just hit the second line like this. If white tries attaching to anything, just extend. No honey. White attaches here, just extend. Here, 
or here. If white plays a peep threatening to cut you like this, just connect. If all your stones are well connected, there's no way for white to make two eyes here. If white descends, just extend. Or you can hit the second line again. So just stick to the simple method of second line moves and extensions and your opponent is never going to be able to make two eyes inside your territory at the end of the game. By the way, you can also watch these lessons on our platform, gomagic.org. Except there, you'll watch them with interactive quizzes right within the lessons and practical exercises right after them. And if you enjoy watching these Go videos and you don't want to miss others like this one, go smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this is Go Magic.